Kaina, and welcome to Voices of Truth One-on-One -on -one with Hawaii's Future, brought to you by the Kiwani Foundation. I'm Ahuke Kahu Cardwell, and here we are today in beautiful Manoa Valley on the island of Oahu. We have a wonderful guest on the show, so let's go on over here and meet him. Kahu Bruce. Yes, hi, aloha. Aloha. Nice to meet you. Oh, welcome here to visit us. Thank you, Kahu Bruce Keolani. Did I say your name right? Yes. And look where we are today. This is gorgeous. What is this? Where are we, Kahu Bruce? We're at uh, Manoa Chinese Cemetery. Manoa Chinese Cemetery. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. And how long has this been here? Uh, from 1850. 1850? Long 1850. time. Yeah. Wow. This building was built from the 1850. Are you the caretaker of the cemetery? Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow, how long have you been doing that? Oh, about four years now. Four years. Yeah. But I know you also you have something else that you're the CEO of, and that's the Living Life Source Foundation, Foundation. yes? Correct, yes. Wow, tell us a little bit about the Living Life Source Foundation. Uh, Living Life Source Foundation is our, our nonprofit. Um, uh, but above that, which I may start with, is our Paito Gakko, um, which is a Peace Martial Arts. Peace Martial Arts. Correct. Wow. Can we walk up uh, into mm -hmm. the cemetery as we talk? So let's talk a little bit about that. What is Peace Martial Arts, Kahu? It's a non-conflicted, non-violence, and, and non-contact. So what you, what you um, and everyone feels to be peace in yourself, is part of, uh, of what we do in peace in our martial arts. So our peace martial arts started from um, uh, my uncle, my teacher, David Nuihiba Sr., uh, who was the uh, founder of Kaito Gakko. Under Kaito Gakko, Uncle David was uh, um, one of the masters that I learned under, and he taught me what is peace, to be peaceful in yourself. And how to treat others. Um, but he taught me what is called Hawaiian martial arts or Lua. Mm -hmm. uh, it was one of the remaining uh, pure traditional Hawaiian martial arts. Now that is a contact martial art Lua, isn't it? It is. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, um, what is, uh, but every, you have to go through your, your basic um, learning uh, process. Um, but Uncle was, uh, was uh, in the highest form of mastery, where they don't have to touch to you. Mm -hmm. uh, for you are, for in order to change your, your conflictive mind, that uh, you can be, become peaceful <laughs> without touching you. Wow. That's nonviolence. That's pretty neat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes well. it, make, it, it will cause you to maybe touch you a little bit, but that's only to scratch you. <laughs> to make you think about, you know, whether you want to continue or not. How long have you been involved in this non-conflict uh, conflict martial arts? Well, Uncle David, uh, and, and how I was accepted uh, before I was born, our, our lineage, um, our ancestors from the family accepted me to take over the lineage before I was born. This is how um, one is accepted into this forms a mastery. So you were actually raised, Kahu, from a small child to be trained to go into this, yeah? Right, so I, I, I never met my uncle until I was maybe 18. But in, in, from the time of being born, uh, I was taught um, externally, if you can say that, um, spiritually, under those um, uh, teachings. And blessings that I got. So the gift is uh, to be accepted in the Lua uh, lineage, uh, you have to have a pure heart, loving people, mm -hmm. uh, loving others, just others, loving the world, loving yourself, mm -hmm. being peaceful. Um, that's one of the first steps. Okay. Uh, well, being accepted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 
are people invited? Is it like invitation only to come and be able to practice this sort of discipline? Or how do people find out about it? Can anybody practice it? How does it work? Um, not everyone can practice. I mean, there, there are forms that uh, uh, are forms of uh, law practice where they, can, where they teach you um, the basic forms of or, for law. Uh, ours are a little bit different. I only can teach if uh, I get a nudge from Uncle David to say it's okay to teach. Uh, I don't teach until that happens. Uh -huh. um, but, you know, it, if, if there's a uh, place and time uh, for me to teach, then I feel that's uh, very necessary for our tradition to be carried on some way. How many students do you have at any one time? Uh, in one time, sometimes only one. Uh -huh. Sometimes uh, maybe up to 15. Wow. Yeah. But uh, um, my other teachers, um, traditional teachers of mastery, was Professor Okazaki. Uh, he taught um, jujitsu, but a uh, form of jujitsu uh, with an esoteric teaching of uh, uh, being storing unto everyone, not just the students, but to everyone, want to learn about esoteric uh, teaching. And uh, so he, he had a form of um, teaching martial arts, but also teaching uh, a form of healing. And so Uncle David too, so as we talk about Loa, and you asked me about uh, the physical side of it. Um, so Loa is, has a um, concept from, from those who don't know uh, what that means. Sometimes they think, well, yeah, I'm going to break your bones. Yeah, because um, that's what it's known for. That's what it's known for. And that's how uh, we are sometimes uh, misjudged. Um, so um, that's why we form uh, what is called peace martial arts. So people peace can, martial arts. Right, so people uh -huh. can understand that Lua is really not, uh, uh, has to be a very violent part of someone's life. Because mm -hmm. in the old days, our ancestors lived in that sort of surrounding, how they were, the values, uh, how we were brought up in nature, how we were brought up with our gods, how we were brought up with our ohana. And so same thing with the, the Lua that we teach, it involves all those things, so that you, can, you and I can become friends all the time. So it sounds like violence is really the core to last resort, yes? Uh, not even, it doesn't have to be. Really? Never. Wow. Never. Wow. Yeah. So, um, like I said, Uncle David taught this uh, Lua, which is how I, how I move you. Uh -huh. And then he taught me how to break bones, uh -huh. how to mend it, though, to be accepted into this, this lineage, to take over the family lineage, the New Hebrew lineage of Lua, mm -hmm. um, was that they knew that I was, was accepting of them. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. So how many years have you been practicing this now? So I'm 66. No kidding, so 66 years. Actually, more than that if you count before you were born, yeah? Correct. Our process is to help to restore that peace and aloha within ourselves and the community and how we speak and how we, how we treat others, um, which is very valuable that has, have been lost. There are parts where we don't accept uh, um, our Hawaiian tradition, our Hawaiian culture, how we live now, um, and so religions have, that have come have really um, touched many people's lives and their hearts to bring peace into them. So I realize that, but it, it's it's um, hard for um, people like us who are healers that we. Um, know that you know you can be accepted in the two worlds um, of religion. You know the uh, traditional religions, like Catholicism, Protestantism. Yeah, because you have like a foot 
in each world, yes? We do, yes. There's only one. There's only one highest being, the holiest being. And he, can, he you know, he, uh, what we call uh, Pele, because I still answer to Pele, uh -huh. under, our, under what we um, serve for the Lua. That's one of our, um, who we speak to. So, Kaho Bruce, do you have people come to you for healing because of what they're feeling, because of what happened to their family, maybe in the overthrow back in 18, late 1800s? We do. Wow. We do. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And what other types of things or issues do people come to you for, for healing? Uh, well, you know, <laughs> uh, we have... Uh, um, so many people. We have people that come to us uh, because the, the baby is crying. Um, why is it crying? And um, so we have, we have, you know, questions come up. So one, uh, several times the baby's name, uh, the one that given to them, has to be changed. Really? The yeah. name is wrong? Um, you know how that works? No, I don't know how that works. Yeah. So sometimes when you are named um, um, without getting the permission to use a name from family members or how you got your name makes a big difference. So sometimes that's very, um, could be uh, uh, life changing. So I have to have, have to, I don't change the name, it's the acceptance of that name now into this person. But I guess the baby can feel that, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. 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 And uh, other people come here who ask for help to go on to the next world when they're passing on because uh -huh. um, they never was able to accept God or accept their ancestors, whichever case, or both. And um, so we're able to help them to receive. Our, our work is to help people to walk in a, a divine light. Divine light is humility, peace, and um, and now it's called aloha, mm -hmm. you know, so people with aloha. So sometimes, you know, individuals, um, we have to encourage them after their passing, we have to encourage them to go, go. After their passing? Mm -hmm. So you're still working with them after they die? Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So that's very interesting you say that because Here's a guy like you, who they were working with you before you were born, mm -hmm. and now you're working with people after they pass away. Mm -hmm. Wow, so it's a whole life cycle then, yeah? Yes, wow. yes, yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's our, um, how we know that, well, well you know, Keoko has, has been able to um, uh, have, a, have a pathway that you can live in this world pass on and come back another time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kaho, I was going to ask you, do you ever get anybody who you can't heal, who you can't help? Uh, sometimes, really? yeah. Sometimes. Why Some, is that? Uh, sometimes because uh, uh, some people don't accept God or Keakua or, um, or sometimes in their own mind they have a struggle of someone helping them. So they're blocked themselves? They're blocked. Yeah, we're working in, in homeless for you, homeless for those who, um, families that are uh, working but they can't find homes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we're working with juveniles to work in our Aina. We have um, an area, well, we just, in our parking lot, we have a small little garden that's used to, um, uh, for our school to use that area for, um, it's Halau Kumana. It's a charter school, mm -hmm. and uh, you know you probably did work over there. Mm -hmm. And now they they um, have been using that as a form of uh, teaching, um, like kalo or some medicinal herbs inside there. So they bring the school kids right mm -hmm. over here mm -hmm. and teach them right on the aina, the mm -hmm. land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah, and then across the street we have five acres farm farmland that we're gonna, that's going to be more productive more higher, higher production. And back here, Manoa Valley, we have uh, a permit from DNR 
to to uh, remove evasive and also to uh, resort with native plants, native trees. Department of Land and Natural Resources mm -hmm. gave you permission to go in there and remove the invasive species mm -hmm. and replace them with the ones that are native to Hawaii, right? Mm -hmm. Man, that's a big job. It's a big job. Also, <laughs> it's a watershed. Right. Right. Um, yeah. Because it's Manoa Valley. <laughs> yeah. Well, I call the area we're working in now is called Waikeakua. Waikeakua. So there's that Y word again. W A I, which means water, water of the gods. Fresh water of the gods. Yeah. Wow. Amazing, amazing. So you got a lot of work going on, a lot of stuff going on here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's very impressive. Yeah. It's very impressive. So Living Life Source Foundation is kind of like the entity, if you will, that um, where all your activities live. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's that's really something. Mm -hmm. Kelco has a plan for us. Um, our living beings have plans. And they pay for us every day uh, to bring us peace and also gifts. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow, what kind of gifts? So every day we pray for, instance, um, for the larger part of this, this uh, world, this, this planet, uh, that uh, other living beings can find humility and peace and that uh, all the struggles that I have in the world can, can, can be lessened and that people can live harmoniously together. And um, so Living Life Source is that part, the entity, the physical entity. Uh, Kaitogako is the spiritual entity that helps to do um, the work that touches the different realms that reaches up to Keokua, but maintaining, again, all of our ancestors to be worthy, to be working with us. Um, and that's how we got all this abundance. Wow, wow. It, it's gifts. Wow. Continuous gifts, continuous gifts that comes from Keokua. Like this, this is a gift that was given to us. It certainly is, looking around. This is a beautiful gift. Yeah. You can't beat this gift. No, you cannot. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so other gifts are coming to us. We don't advertise what we do. Uh, gifts just come to us. Um, so meaning that people who want our help, they come to us. Mm -hmm. uh, they either use our facility to bring their um, group here for retreat, for healing, Catholic charities. We have another one coming up pretty soon. The schools that we help service the children, mm -hmm. so they become, uh, yeah, so they can walk into the path of the light, the wow. divine light. Wow. That's, our, that's what we want to do. So this is a, what Living Life Source does in the schools, in the community. So working with the judicial, juvenile judicial, we have those that come out to help us and they can restore their life in the Aina, working here or back there. Fulfill, fulfill everything that they have lost. Sometimes they've lost their ancestors, they've lost their families. Um, so they become at risk, which is not a good word, but they become vulnerable. That's a better word because they become vulnerable to uh, our society. And here they get back on the path of light, yes? Correct. Wow. Wow. So how does the cemetery here play into all this, Kahu Bruce? The cemetery um, is a larger part. So it's every year we have, um, uh, pretty soon in October, we're going to have an uh, opening ceremony for Makiiki. And every year um, uh, we, we do this whole ceremony walking um, around here. And we have a ahu here. One year, um, where the ahu was, um, someone had taken a picture of the ahu, and there was a Light, uh, beam of light that's coming and right on top of the ahu. Right out of the sky, down to the ahu. Yes. Wow. That's the divine light. Wow. That's really and something. It's, it's in the photo. Really? Mm hmm. 
Wow, amazing. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So what else goes on up here in the cemetery? Uh, we're more about spiritual, or just what we do here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, so the, you, you observe the Makahiki season mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. What other things, what other activities go on? Yeah. So in, in our, our work to restore um, systems or help to uh, fill systems um, or change systems, Meaning that in in different system in the government education, um, uh, family styles how they live, uh, uh, individuals who are incarcerated, uh, all these people can come here to do restoration, healing, and wellness. Do they bring people who are incarcerated mm -hmm. up here, mm -hmm. right from the jail? Mm -hmm. Wow! And what happens when those people get here? Uh, well, it becomes uh, uh, a part of what we do is the mentoring of, of, of them, how, we, how they should be treated. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sounds so like how I love you is how we treat each other. Wow. You know, Kahu, it sounds like you're a busy guy. Uh, no, God. You know, everything I do is for God. But it sounds like a lot of people come up here because a lot of people need this kind of the very exact kind of help that you can give them, huh? Oh yeah, I have also people um, who who have not they they've gone to the doctors and no doctor can help them, and sometimes I have to do exorcism mm -hmm. within a person um, or just helping to heal and have them be touched and healed by by Aku. Wow! Yeah. Wow! I don't do that. I just ask him to come, and we ask him to come uh -huh. and to do his healing work. Wow. Yeah, and that's not only individuals, but properties, um, people having trouble with their properties. You mean like a disagreement between mm -hmm. neighbors and stuff like that, or mm -hmm. maybe between themselves and, uh, you know, state or officials, something mm -hmm. like that? Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. How did you learn how to do all this? All these things uh, it just comes continually comes really mm -hmm. Wow mm -hmm. that's amazing yeah that's amazing uh, I think it's uh, uh, something so I am I'm, I'm trying to teach others so I don't have to do everything myself <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> a good thing there's there's a uh, um, like I said I'm it is a busy um, uh, but it's good busy because we're helping people to um, live again. Yes, you're helping people to live again mm -hmm. by putting them back on the path of light, huh? Correct. Now this is still an active cemetery, isn't it, Kahu Bruce? Mm -hmm. I mean, people still are, are buried here today. Correct. Wow. And it, it, like you said earlier in the program, it was set up and started in 1850. So there's been people in here who have been here a long time. Long time. Yeah. Is it only people of Chinese ancestry that are here? No, so now they, they have uh, opened it up to other um, cultures, other um, uh, families. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this side is primarily Chinese. Uh, cause this side over here? Yeah. Uh -huh. But now, if you're coming up uh, East Manoa Road, on the right-hand side, there's another lot that they've opened up on that side. So now they've opened up to other other families. And because, um, yeah, yeah, they... they the same thing, they want to help other people. Kahu Bruce, you know, Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future is broadcast not only all through Hawaii, but it's, it uh, airs in many different markets around the world. Mm -hmm. So probably right now, mm -hmm. somebody on the other side of the world is watching you and me, mm -hmm. and they're listening to you, mm -hmm. and they're saying, boy, I sure could use what he has to offer. Mm -hmm. I got some real trouble right now that I just don't know how to get back on the path. Mm -hmm. What would you say to them? What's your message to them right now? Well, the first thing is knowing the practice, the basic practice, uh, being able to... Um, the, there are two lights that in our process. One is the white divine light. Uh, that's to bring peace and harmony and love in, in, into your, your, your spirit and into your soul. Second light is a yellow light from all that comes from heaven. Uh, the yellow light is to protect you uh, in the inside, inside your body, all your system, 
uh, all, all the way down to your atom of your body. Um, so spiritually and um, uh, physically, you're protected and also given given uh, peace in, in you. So if, if that can help him just to do that, then, then that's all that's needed. But that's our, our first um, encouragement for them to do something like that. Wow. Uh, very simple, um, but they have to accept that. Um, just that for them to uh, accept the divine light. So it's really all about acceptance, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Wonderful message. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, I have to go beyond, we have to go beyond that. We have to overcome those challenges to help the person. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, great. That's wonderful. Kahu Bruce, that's where we have to leave it today. We want okay. to thank you thank for you. being on Voices of Truth. And please keep doing what you're doing because it sounds like you're helping an awful lot of people. Thank you. Good job. Appreciate it. Good job. And we appreciate you. Yeah. And to our viewers, we appreciate you being along here today with Kahu Bruce and me in beautiful Manoa Valley. Remember, you can watch us on the web 24-7 on VoicesOfTruthTV.com, and you can like Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's Future on Facebook. I'm Ahuke Kahu Cardwell for the Kiwani Foundation, and until next time, ahui ho! Mahalo for watching Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. Watch us on the web 24-7 at VoicesOfTruthTV.com. You'll find all our shows, including this one, in case you want to see it again or share it with family and friends. Also view our weekly video commentaries at FreeHawaiiTV.com. And check out our blog, published daily, at FreeHawaii.info. It's all part of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network.